Hello, YouTubers. This is Hassan Habib. Today, I wanted to talk to you about this new technology that uh, the mic that uh, Facebook came up with in 2015 and started to get, to get a lot of attention in 2017, which is GraphQL. GraphQL is the idea that you communicate with an API, and instead of the API dictating a certain set or a certain structure of data, you tell the API how you want your data to look like and filter or do some querying on the API side, on the server side, and get back only what you want that is beneficial for both the client and, and the server. The server doesn't have to send data the client doesn't really care about. The client doesn't have to receive data or wait for a huge amount of data that they really don't, 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 don't need. They only need you know, the data that makes sense for them and their application. The reason why I said I was going to talk about GraphQL because <clears throat> I, I was fascinated by the idea and then I did a little bit of research. And then I discovered that Microsoft already has an existing technology in place that allows you to do this a lot more natively. You don't have to do a lot of work. Uh, it's, it's easy to integrate with an existing API so you don't have to go rewrite a lot of things. It's, it's really simple three steps like I'm going to explain to you uh, in a little bit. And, and most importantly, you know, it's it, it has a lot more capabilities, OData, than GraphQL. And we, we're going to go through, you know, some research and details about that. So, so let's see, let's see a situation here. I, I went ahead and I built a simple API. And the API basically just just really plain simple API if it, it, it has a controller that returns bunch of students so I added bunch of students it's using entity framework you know you call the API it brings you back the students pretty straightforward so this is a link in here I'm just gonna it, it's starting my API on my local machine and I'm just gonna go here and just uh, terminate all that this is from previous trials and I'm gonna just do API slash students and I'm going to try to retrieve all the students that I have already stored in that API, right? So as you see here, one, two, three, four, five, six, you have uh, five. You have five uh, pieces of data. Now imagine with me that if you're building a front end uh, with a search, uh, a text box for search, and you want to allow your users to have an autocomplete functionality, right? And the autocomplete functionality will allow them to, to easily find the name of the student that they're looking for, right? So if you're calling that from the front end, you don't really care about the date of birth. You don't really care about the stage or the subjects or the student ID. All you really want to care about is the student name. So that's a problem. If, if the object of the student is not normalized enough, we've all been there when, when we... When, where you would see APIs that return too much data and you have to filter that on your end. Um, you, want, you want to filter, you want to only return the names for an autocomplete functionality. The, the traditional way of, of working this out is people going and saying, oh, build a, TT, a DTO and have that DTO object have a mapper that takes the actual object and converts it to a DTO and then respond with the DTO contract to your client. That's a nightmare. It's a nightmare from so many perspectives. Uh, you have to build an API every time you want to add a new functionality. So you have to, to, to build a new endpoint and you have to do a mapper. What if you want the name and the date of birth? What if you, another client said, no, I want the name and the stage. I don't really care about the date of birth. It becomes a nightmare, right? And if you say, I don't care, let my client do all the work and the filtering. Now you have network transaction problem and optimization problem. If your objects are too big and you're returning a lot of objects, now your client has to wait longer than they should. So your API would, would really suck, really. So what would be a better way is to implement uh, something like GraphQL, which is OData. Let's see how we can implement OData in an ASP.NET uh, Web API project. So you have all these students. I only care about the names. How do we get that done? Here's what we can do. Three simple steps. Go to manage NuGet packages, find 
and NuGet packages specifically for Web API. That's Microsoft ASP.NET Web API is that old data. And let's install that in your project. All right, let's wait for it. Install, accept. All right, it's all installed. Right, and then we want to go to the Web API configuration, and we wanna we wanna enable that. Right. So enable query support. So if you have enable query support, that means that your API is is now going to be capable of accepting queries, right? It's 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 giving you this a little warning to prevent you from query attacks and you could go in details about how to prevent that and and whatnot, but for now, like like a safer option, a lot of people use is to go and say, you know, add O data uh, query filter, something like that. So if I go like this and I add the 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 reference, it should it should all be good and dandy, right? But that's very specific. I want to do the enable query support instead, right? And let's go to the students controller, the same API endpoint that we were using. And let's go and do something, a little notation here called enable query. So now when you add that notation, that makes that API able to accept queries. So you know, I can hit that endpoint with queries and that and I'll, I'll do the stuff that we want to do. Now your API is a lot, a lot more stronger. Now your API is, in, is on steroids. It's, it's insane. Let's see how that works. All right, it's, it's just launching the web page. You didn't care about that. So let's first verify that our, our API still works the same way it used to. So we're not breaking existing clients. You have existing clients that are using your API, API a certain way. You're not giving them a hard time about anything. API still works the same way it used to. No problem there. But your API now has a lot more powers. If we do question mark filter... Uh, let's let's start with a select. If you do a select and you say I only want the names of these students, immediately it goes and it does that for you. All right? It even does crazy things. Like you could go and say order by name, and it'll go and order the students by their names: C, D, H, J, and R. Right? I, can I do order by name and then select only the name? Can I do that? There you go, right? So it, it gives your API this amazing capability of letting your client decide what they want and that's beneficial to both you and the client. Um, now, I'm going to post down here in the video uh, a link to a very, very uh, comprehensive research on Telerik about why OData is a lot better than GraphQL and Oracle uh, ORDS, right? This gentleman here did an extensive uh, uh, research, Sumit Sarkar, uh, about, you know, how, why OData is a lot better uh, why you should go with OData, it, you can see in his uh, research here, uh, there's a lot more capabilities on OData than in GraphQL and ORDS. Uh, thank you for watching. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe. Uh, and see you in another video.